Hey there everybody and welcome back to Black Arrow Gaming. I'm Bob, back for another Age of Wonders 4 series. Um, a bit of a chaotic series as you can see from the realm setup screen here. There's a lot going on in this game. I'll explain kind of what's what I've got set up here momentarily. First a quick bit of housekeeping though. I did want to let everyone know the reason that I don't have a webcam down in the bottom left here like I usually do. Recently moved to a new apartment and the lighting just is not right for it. So until I figure out a solution, I'll just be running with no webcam. I figure uh, it's probably not gonna make a huge difference for everybody, but just figured I'd let you know. But that being said, let's talk about the game setup here. So as you can see, um, I do have the Ashen War here. I'm gonna let, uh, I'll just kind of hover that there while I explain what's going on. You guys can read it on your screens if you want, but basically, there are uh, two teams of dragons, three dragons on each team that are at war with each other. Now, normally how this scenario works is um, you can either ally with one team and defeat all the members of the other team or just kill them all. Um, what I have done is I have set myself to my own team. So I have to kill them all, but the two teams of dragons will also be trying to kill both each other and me. So they have another target to go after and I have to make sure that neither team becomes so powerful as to wipe out the other one and take their stuff. Because if one of these two teams of dragons becomes too powerful and kills the other one, they're gonna be that much harder for me to kill. So I have to be thoughtful about which side I'm attacking and when. Um, other land modifiers here, oh, the other main game modifier here is I do have Seal's Victory on for this game. It is set to Dormant. Didn't want this to be a major focus of the game, so there, it does take more Seal's points to win. Um, but it is just kind of there, and it's mostly there to give me something else to think about. If one of the teams of dragons is starting to get a little bit too close to that Seal's Victory, I may need to intervene. Now, important note here, I am not going to allow myself to get that seal's victory. This is only for the dragons. I can prevent them from getting it, but in order for me, this is self-imposed rule for this series, there's really only one. For me to consider myself to win the game, I can't do it with seal's victory. I have to actually defeat all of these dragons or last long enough for them to defeat each other and then I can uh, get the, the remainder, which is why that victory is on there. I don't want to just have sit this thing out. I wanted to give myself a reason to get involved, potentially. So, um, yeah. Uh, the other settings are mostly map modifiers. I've gone for a land map here, um, but we do have Scorched Climate. So this is going to get rid of all the Arctic Temperate and Highland Provinces. It's pretty much just going to be deserts and, like, desolate terrain. Important note though, the desolate terrain is going to be affected by volcanic eruptions. This is basically just a really nasty place to live. Um, this causes volcanic eruptions during combat, which kind of place a marker on the map, and then there's like uh, physical and fire damage that affects that within uh, a certain number of turns. Also, units in desolate provinces suffer volcanic heat, preventing regeneration, um, granting, or some, granting some frost resistance, but giving a fire weakness. So not a very pleasant place to live. I did give my uh, character a modifier to help me deal with this a little bit, but I'll talk about that later. Of course, I put dragon territories on because it's all about a dragon war. So we're going to see a lot of dragon units and fight a lot of dragon units this game. I set uh, the ruined realm active just to kind of simulate that there's been a massive war here. But I did also set city states as another modifier basically making free cities have more population. So there's going to be less city-states, but the few that are around are going to be stronger and bigger. Basically, they were strong enough to last this far in the war. As you can see, the number of players is one. That's because it doesn't count the dragons. So it's just me. There are no, but there's just me and the dragons. There's nobody else in this one. Um, and I have very large because there's seven people um, in classic turns. So let's get into the, well, the factions, it's pretty self-explanatory. I'll go over mine once the game is actually started, although some people may have seen what I'm playing as with the thumbnail, but um, yeah, so we've got Songvar the Radiant, let's all these others. I think it's these three that are on a team. And then if you go down, um, it's these three down here, I think are also on a team. These strike me as being like the evil dragons. That's probably a barbarian, probably industrious, probably, probably dark. I've never done this scenario before, so I don't know for sure. This one's probably the magic, uh, mystic culture. That's probably feudal, and this one's probably high culture, but we'll find out once we actually get into the game. I do have the AI difficulty setting on Brutal here. A uh, quick side note, the dragons all seem to be locked into hard. I can't change that, 
but I set difficulty to brutal anyway. I don't think it's going to make a difference though, but I think just because of the sheer number of these guys and the fact that they get some very powerful unique abilities because of the scenario should still make them pretty challenging to fight. Um, and I did tick teams on, so without spoiling here, but I am team one, this is me up here. This is going to ensure that I'm basically at war with them all the time. So I can't make an alliance with any of them. Um, custom rules, yeah, all that other stuff, you guys know what that all means, so we're not gonna go into that. I did turn the handicaps off just because I don't like those. That may be content for a future series, but not this one. As far as game flow and everything, I'm not gonna click through these, but you can see all the modifiers I've made to the side here. World threat level is high, starting conditions are hard. That means there's gonna be more stuff for me to fight on the map, more defenders and structures, and I will have less units to get started with. Um, expansion and magic victories have been disabled, so uh, those are off. And um, so basically only war is the only way to win um, out with the allied victory there. And then hero resurgence, I normally leave that as never. Combat restart is never and retry is AI only. Just for those of you who are new to my series, this is I basically play Iron Man mode. So um, I allow myself one, if I do an auto combat and it goes badly, I allow myself one manual retry. I can do it manually if the auto doesn't handle it well. But after that, I have to accept the result. That's basically the rules. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. We will head into the Ashen War. I'm excited to play this scenario. I've been kind of looking forward to this one for a while. I thought it sounded cool, but I've just never tried it. I haven't even done this off camera, so this is all new to me. Um, but I figure that I should have a chance, a reasonably good chance to come out on top here if I can pace myself correctly. And like I said, just kind of avoid letting any one side get too powerful. But the only person powerful enough to stop this, the only man up to the challenge of ending the Dragon War and saving the world, is going to be none other than our glorious leader, Steve from Accounting, at the Internal Revenue Service. Steve from Accounting is, well, you know, there's very complex lore here. Let's go into it. Steve is really mad the dragons haven't been paying their taxes. I am playing as, whoops, I kind of clicked through this too quickly. Uh, I was gonna talk about my modifiers and stuff, but we can go into that here, I suppose. Um, so, wow, I started really close to a haunted graveyard. Wow, okay, so I'm gonna have to deal with that quickly. But let's talk about our, uh, our race here. So as you can see, we've got Steve here, he has a big gun. Um, because none of these dragons have guns. The dragon DLC came out before the Reaver culture did, so I am the only Reaver culture in this game. There should be a nice balance of other cultures if I'm right about what cultures the dragons are probably leading. But I am leading the Internal Revenue Service as Steve from Accounting. We have Desert Adaptation. I picked this because basically this gives me a way to turn the desolate provinces into desert ones and allows me to build farms on desert provinces, which is the only way I'm going to be able to build farms, unless I go underground and find, like, the fungal mushroom uh, terrain. Um, the keen-sided effect I have picked because it's really good with these musket guys. Now, later on, well, actually, I can just click on this guy here. Um, this is one of my mage locks. They're a kind of core unit for the Reaver culture. They're very good, tier two. Um, and I gave them keen-sided because they do a very powerful range attack that is, you just really need it to hit. It, it does a ton of damage, but you need that accuracy to help it land. And also, perhaps more importantly, you need that accuracy to make sure you don't hit friendly units that are standing nearby, because it can be really bad if that mage lock hits a friendly unit for full damage. Um, you can do a ton of damage to your own units by accident. So I wanted that extra accuracy. I also picked Sneaky because it pairs really well with some stuff that the Reavers have. Um, and it also pairs really well with something you can get from a tier two tome. Um, I'll just go ahead and spoil it here, but it's gremlins. Gremlins are really, really good with reaver culture. You can use them to break enemy guard and flip enemy units around, which can be devastating if you got a line of these mage locks. Reaver culture also has a spell that distracts and breaks guard of a uh, enemy unit, which is really, really powerful with the when, with these guys when you pair it with Sneaky, just for that 25% damage on flanking attacks, because 25% boost on an already ready, really powerful attack is a lot of damage. Um, 
culture. I am, of course, Reavers. Ruthless Raiders, I basically just pick because it rewards you for breaking stuff and killing units, and that's something I'm going to be wanting to do a lot of anyway. And then Fabled Hunters, I got uh, for the extra promotion level for these guys, but also Fabled Hunters is a very powerful uh, economic boost, getting 100% resources from clearing infestations, resource nodes, that kind of thing. It's really, really good. Fabled Hunters is just, it's just good because you're kind of clearing stuff for the entire game, really, um, or at least the vast majority of it. So it, it's always a nice economic bonus. Um, we'll get into more of the details later, but I want to jump into some gameplay here. Steve has got stuff to do. Specifically, it looks like I've got some undead to kill. Before I do anything, though, I want to zoom out and see where I'm at on the map. Okay, good. I am not... Wow, this map is maybe bigger than I had intended it to be. Okay, this could be a big, long game. I didn't really... I didn't... I don't know. I think I just picked large. Did I pick very large? Like, is there where, somewhere I can see the settings? I meant to pick large. That might have been a mistake, but uh, we're going to roll with it. If anything, it'll let the AI grow to be quite powerful. Um, but I need to get over there before they have Seals Victory options. There's got to be somewhere where I can see the uh, game settings, right? In any case, let's go ahead and get started. Steve uh, needs to go west, and there's a production stash right there. That could be quite nice. I would really like to find some food to get that second growth level pretty quickly. Um, there is something down here. I can't tell what that is. It might be. That does look like a food cart. I think that is a food cart. It's kind of hard to tell but because it's partially obscured by the clouds, but I think I'm going to go for that first. I'd rather get growth and do the production later. I want to get a storehouse and focus on growth pretty early. Um, is there snow over here? There's not supposed to be snow. Forest cliff. It looks like that's a snowy biome, but it doesn't say that it is. I'm not sure. Maybe it's like white volcanic ash. Huh? Let's go down and uh, meet these guys. Uh -huh. Probably just kill that first group. I'll bring the, uh, well, what I could do is I could make sure that that's actually what I want. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a food cart. Come on, get a little closer. No, that is not. That is a gold stash. Okay. Still not a bad thing to find early, but uh, something I could probably get later. I still think I'm going to go after this group here, though. They're on a production stash, um, which I could still use. I wanted to try to boost production of something a little earlier than that, but we'll go ahead and just start the storehouse anyway. Um, I probably, with the production around, I can probably... Maybe that's food down there. I'm not really sure. I wanted to boost production before picking up the production to get more out of it. Let's take these guys out because I think there may be something else down there for me to pick up or clear um, and it might be food. All right. Let's pull our uh, observer in here. No, that's more gold. Well, you know what? That's fine. Gold is good. Now, we are going to be fighting this battle on volcanic terrain, so I'll have to watch out for the um, modifiers and stuff. I also want to go ahead and order production of an extra mercenary. And that's pretty much all my money there, so picking up more gold will be useful. All right, let's do this. Uh, probably going to want to do this manually. Let's see, what do we got in here? There is a necromancer in here. Let's go ahead and do this first combat manually. I'm kind of curious to see how the uh, volcanic eruption feature works, because I haven't really played with it before. Okay, so it just sort of lets you know where there's going to be an eruption, and then you better get out of the way. I like the look of these volcanic environments, and I don't fight in them a lot in most normal Age of Wonders games. They have a tendency to kind of just be mostly grassy fields and forests, so I wanted to make this look a little different. All right, so we'll talk more about kind of like the details of my strategy as we go. Um, I am going to mark that necromancer in the back because I'm probably going to want to kill him pretty quickly because I think he can reanimate these skeletons. He's got raise undead, yeah, and he's got strengthen undead. 
All right, we'll leave Steve here and leave the Harrier here. No, we don't want the Harrier there. We don't want them being able to reach us. I'll go ahead and line up kind of like this. All right, opening up with some frost damage there with the Necromancer. Can I kill the Necromancer? No, I think we're just going to have to deal with this Resurrection because he's a little bit too far away. Um, one thing you can do is push these guys around, and I think I could shove him to this tile with uh, Drive Back, so I can make use of that, uh, that to maybe shove him here and might make it an easier shot for my Musketman. But with these guys closing in on me, I kind of have to do something about them. The Harriers can slow them down a bit, so that's handy. Um, also, I probably want to make sure I'm marking targets first, because that's going to let me do bonus damage against them with Focused Aggression, and also have a better chance of hitting them. Um, what is your odds? Steve's probably already got 100% odds to hit them, and I'm sure those guys do too. Alright, I'm going to mark this guy, so he can't... Actually, I'm going to mark that guy. I'm going to try to actually kill him. These guys I'm going to try to immobilize. I've got a 90% chance. So that keeps them at bay. This should allow Steve and the Mage Lock to just straight up kill this guy. Yeah. And then I can get this person up there. And I actually do think Drive Back is probably a good thing to use here. The angle of this rock should force him to this tile, I think. Yes. Okay. And then this guy can't move, and he's got a uh, unit on him. All right, I think we're good there. Okay, he's just going to resurrect his buddy. That's fine, because I don't... Yep, his buddy can't move on this turn, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and then I'm just going to keep the pressure on those guys. The Harrier, I'm going to... Let's see, do these guys have the ability to retaliate? Because they did just come back. I'm going to try to kill those guys. Might mark them, although I don't think it would make a difference. I think it's going to take, yeah, it's going to take both of the, my units to kill him anyway. So, I wonder if I marked him, if I could one-shot him with Steve. That might be enough. Nah, it's not quite enough. Dang. Okay. All right. Then what I'm going to do is shoot this one. What if you guys came in here? No. All right. I'll just finish off this one and then have the Harriers go deal with this guy. He can retaliate, but the Harriers can do more damage to him. And I don't think he really threatens the Harrier as much because he's pretty damaged now. And as for these guys, I kind of want to pin them in here. Um, if they move here, I think they'd be free to attack. So I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to force them closer to the rest of my units. And whittle them down a bit. I think that's it. These spread fire too. Looks cool. All right, so they're going to go behind my lines. Okay, that's fine. They just want to attack my observer. Okay, they're pretty much dead at this point now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mark them again, and then I think the I think the mage locks can kill them. No, not quite, but Steve can. All right, and then the mage locks kill these guys, and we win. And there's the first battle in the history books. Um, I can't heal in this kind of nasty volcanic terrain, which sucks because I can't quite get out of it either. <laughs> but, uh, oh, there's gremlins down here. Man, I would like to get one of those of my own. These guys are going to be a major part of my strategy going forward. I got to give credit to my buddy Joel for this. He's the one who came up with the idea to use these gremlins extensively with the Reaver culture. They just work so well because of this behind you ability, turning a cart, turning to target 180 degrees and breaking their card or canceling their defense mode. Doesn't work against all units, 
because the ones with charge resistance, that won't work. Um, but it works against a lot of units. Very, very, very useful. Well, since I'm down here, I'll go ahead and pick up that extra gold. And then I'm going to send... Eh, I probably need to leave this guy here if I'm going to take these these units on. Um, although I may want to wait a minute for... I probably want to wait a minute for um, my... Let's see, where is he? My mercenary to get done. Okay, that finished most of the production for the storehouse. Boosting production gives it another 30%. So I might switch this to something else. Yeah, I'm going to switch this to something else so none of the production boost gets wasted. Because that's going to give make 30% of that just get done instantly. So we'll switch to, say, maybe a workshop. Yeah, we'll switch to a workshop because production and draft are going to be pretty important too. And I'll let the city grow naturally for now. I like finding food early because then I can use it to grab a forest and finish a storehouse really quickly. But this will be okay. As for my research, here's just another reason why... This is why I picked Tome of the Horde. I didn't talk about my starting Tome at all, but I picked Tome of the Horde largely because of the Hound Masters. Spawnkin is also pretty good, uh, but the Hound Masters... Um, are really, really nice with this combination. I don't know for sure if I'll get Spawnkin. I think I probably will, because the 20% damage bonus um, is a lot of extra damage for those Mage Locks. But I, I don't really like the, um, I don't really like the, uh, the debuff that you get in terms of like taking more unit casualties faster. I think it's probably worth the extra damage bonus though. Because that sort of makes up for that if you take casualties. And if you're playing ideally, you won't want too much stuff hitting your mage locks anyway. Um, so I'll probably get Spawnkin. But the real bread and butter, I think, of this, especially in the early game, is those Hound Masters. The reason these guys are so good is not only do they summon a Hound that has flanking. Um, or no, sorry, not that has flanking. It can mark units. But these guys also have weak point shot, which is basically a crossbow on a mounted unit that does a single shot for full damage. And has a flanking bonus against, or it has a bonus damage against marked units, but also benefits from my uh, sneaky ability on my race, which is going to them, give them even more sneak attack damage. And because they're a mounted archer, they're very good at maneuvering to get that damage. It just pairs really, really well with everything else that I've got going on. Steve leveled up. The first thing we're going to do for him is get him sprint. This is really good with uh, mage lock heroes because it allows them to take a step away from an enemy and still shoot because it leaves them with full action points even after a single step so i will absolutely be taking sprint that can be a lifesaver in certain very nasty situations and then i think that's it for turn one that was a lengthy first turn but i kind of wanted to lay out the overall uh goal that i'm going for here it could be a little while before we run into those dragons, but I'm actually okay with that. I just need to intervene long enough to prevent any of them from getting a seals victory. And I also kind of do want to meet them early so that um, I can keep track of their progress towards that victory. All right, so five turns till a workshop. I'm going to wait on the production of... Or I'm going to wait to pick up that production for a minute until I can make sure it gets all funneled into something else that's useful. Um, in the meantime, Steve probably needs to go deal with that haunted boneyard before it becomes a problem. Um, I don't know what's down here. It looks like... Is that an ancient wonder? That might be... That's either a, a wonder or a cave entrance. It might be a cave entrance. It's sort of hard to tell in the fog. Um, I don't know if it's worth sending Steve down to go fight those guys over that little bit of gold down there. But if I don't get it now, I'll probably never pick it up, so... Uh, Harrier and Mage Locks versus three tier two units. I would probably be okay here, but I think I want to wait for that extra Merc just in case. So he'll be done on the next turn. So I'm going to send Steve up for a turn to allow him to heal. Then we'll take the Merc down to get the gold and come back to go after the Haunted Boneyard, I think. Um, unless I just decide to go after the Haunted Boneyard first. For now, we'll send Steve back up, and I'm going to send this guy to the west to see what other, if there's any other free pickups I can get. Uh, nothing free. There's an enchanted den down there. 
Let's take it over to the next turn. All right. Um, I still can't quite grow the city yet, so we'll let the workshop go another turn. So I'm not going to lose any production on that. Um, uh -huh. I'm going to send Steve over this way. I think we are going to take the Haunted Boneyard first, uh -huh. just because it's kind of right in my face here and blocking my room to grow. Uh, we can come back for the other stuff later. So, yeah, let's send this mercenary out here with Steve, head into the Haunted Boneyard. They might send something after me. If they do, that's okay. I'll just make sure that uh, everybody's grouped up because it shouldn't be like an unkillable challenge just yet. Yeah, it's not too bad. So I'm going to send this guy back up here because I am going to need the help with marking units in this fight. And let's see. Yeah, there's nothing else I want to change here other than probably ordering an extra Harrier and then an extra Observer um, just so that I have just so that I can explore. I might honestly send it straight towards the dragons just so I can meet both teams and keep an eye on their progress, which is not something that I normally do. Um, I picked desert, uh, desert adaptation so that I can use Scorch the Land. I probably need to think about whether I need to cast that. Um, this doesn't really tell me what, I can't tell what type of province this is. It looks like it's snow under the trees, which is a little strange. I think these are snow provinces, but it doesn't actually tell you when you click on it because it's a full forest. Um, I probably want to turn these into deserts, but will that destroy the trees? I'm not really sure. I've never used a, never used this before, so I could try it, but it would take up all my mana. And I don't think it's worth doing that right now, so we'll wait. I do have plenty of forests over here, so honestly, it might be okay if it destroys the trees. Um, I probably would put a forester on it. You know what? I'm not going to use my magic for anything else right now. So just for science, I'm probably going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to need it ready to cast regardless, so... Yeah, let's do that, and then on the next turn when it's time to grow, I can try to get, like, that quarry up there or something. Something to help my economy a little bit more. Okay, so... Oh, good. There's a um, level-up structure over here. I really like finding those early in the game. Let's get Steve and his group here. And... Yeah, I think this is good. We should be able to handle that. We'll do an auto just out of curiosity to see how well they handle it. They did not handle it well. We're gonna retry that. <laughs> Okay. So, who's the biggest threat here? The zombies really aren't that scary. Except it's a zombie mole. That's kind of, or a zombie rat mole? I'm not sure. I think that's a mole. Aggressive mold warps, yeah. It's a zombie mole. That's kind of terrifying. Uh, the bone horror is probably the biggest threat in this bunch. I think we just need a good defensive line here, which is going to be kind of a theme of this series, is forming a strong front line and guarding the range units. It's kind of what Reaver culture does. Um, I want to make sure that uh, the only thing that guy can hit are my pikemen. Steve can be a little bit more front and center, or I'll leave him on one of the flanks, because if something gets around to him, he can sprint and get away. But honestly, I think this setup should be fine. Just use that rock for defense and let them come to me. Um, I need my... I need this little guy to come over, and I want to make sure the dragon can't reach him. So get over here and start marking stuff. Probably start with... Yeah, we'll start with the wyvern. I think he probably does the most damage. 
I want to try to kill these other little units. Uh, the bone horror is not as scary once it's close and already kind of charged you. Um, but it does spawn a unit if you kill it. Okay, this is pretty good. Um, already I can take out this dragon, I think. Yeah, it's about half. That's a little more. That's actually really close. I think that's enough to kill it, but I don't... 100% know for sure for certain I do want to kind of surround this guy with pikemen probably one here and here and leave them on defense and I would like to hit this guy in the back with a powerful range attack if I can um, so what I think I'm gonna do or if I could uh, prevent him from moving entirely that might be even better or prevent that from moving entirely on this turn that's actually probably the best solution. I don't know where this guy's going, but he's off on his own little adventure. Uh, we're going to make sure that this thing dies with an additional mark. And then what I can do is I can shoot him with Steve. I can shoot him with these guys. You know what? This is what we'll do. We'll pin that zombie in place. And I'm just going to move these guys up because they have that charge resistance. And just guard. He's not going to do a very large amount of damage to either one of them. So I'll just leave them on defense and nothing else can really touch them right now. I think that's good. Okay, get that giant slayer buff there. I guess those guys can run around and help, but they're not going to make a huge difference. And then I can try to whittle this thing down. I got a 90% chance to hit it with the mage locks. I'm probably going to bump that up to 100 with the uh, with this guy. Yeah, let's start marking him. Um, I can kill it, but it is going to spawn one of the skeletons. If I just leave it alone right now, it actually isn't threatening much. I probably should have marked the zombies instead, now that I think about it. Mm -hmm. oh, what are your guys' chance? Yeah, I think that's actually less dangerous than the skeleton it would spawn, because the skeleton it would spawn would have a multi-attack. I'm going to have Steve do a sprint here. And see if I can hit those guys with Steve for a better amount of damage. I really should have used the Observer's Mark on that group there. I can push him around. I can do quite a bit of damage if I attack. That actually might be better. Okay, what I could do is... I will take the 70% chance here. It's a little risky if I hit my own guys, but... 70 is normally about the cutoff that I'm willing to risk. That basically makes them useless. Um, so I can leave them alive if I want to. And I'm gonna position Steve here so that he has a better shot at stuff from this side. In fact, I could put him here. And even if this guy tries to run up to Steve to stab him, Steve can just sprint and back off. Um, and then I'm gonna have this guy come over here and be ready to jump in and help with that skeleton when it becomes a problem. Um, yeah. Steve doesn't need to do anything this turn. He did start with poison darts for some reason, so I guess he could kill something. Ah, you know what? He could just kill this guy. I actually didn't even notice he had that. I should have looked at his items. I forgot because I picked... Uh, it was one of my cultural traits. Um, also, he just shot those out of his gun, which I didn't know he would do. Uh, but that's kind of funny. Um... Yeah, I got a couple extra items from my cultural trait. Wasn't really paying attention to what those were, so... Uh, who's next that I haven't used yet? Okay, it's just the Harriers. We're, they're gonna sit this out for now. Yeah. You guys just stay on defense. And we'll get the first strike on that thing again. Oh, it's gonna eat his buddy. Okay, that's fine. Alright, I thought he might do that. That's fine. Because Steve can simply sprint away and continue shooting. Which is such a fantastic bonus. Okay, Steve's going to one-shot that thing. 
Um, and wow, my mage locks have a are gonna do full damage to that. So I'm gonna mark it so they do even more damage. Uh, mage locks, would you take him? That's a flank attack for even more damage, and that would let Steve do. Oh my gosh. Okay, yeah, we'll do this. That flank damage is so good on Reavers. And then this thing just went from full health to almost nothing, just like that. Um, at this point, I'm going to... Actually, what I'll do is I'll stab him once. Then a skeleton will pop out. I will immobilize the skeleton and mark it so that I benefit from focused aggression. And then easily finish it off. Very nice. Reavers are so much fun. If you use them correctly, they're capable of so much damage output, but they are... Ooh, that's nice. That's really nice, actually. Um, they are a little bit uh, glass cannon, though, so you gotta be careful with them. I will gladly take that reward. That's gonna... That finishes Houndmasters, I think, and gets me to designate target, which is really probably one of the best spells for this build that you could ask for. Another reason why Sneaky pairs so well with these guys is you get that, uh, you get to distract an enemy so it takes flank attacks from every side and it marks them twice, which just stacks so well with everything else that I've got going on. Um, I finished the Harrier here. I'm three turns away from the workshop, but I can grow now. So I'm going to, let's see, what do I want here? I probably want one of the I want one of these two because it gets me either gold or um, or a quarry. I think I'll take the quarry in this situation, but I'm going to build a forester on it. Well, I should it's say quarry. It's technically an iron deposit, but I will build a forester there. That takes care of most of the rest of the storehouse's production. So we can finish the storehouse, and then what I'll probably do is queue a library after it because that's like the next thing that you can build with a forester. And I really could use the research. Since I got that research boost, I can actually already start making Houndmasters. I probably will let myself make one more Observer first, just because I think I keep calling them Overseers, but they're Observers. I want to make one more of those because I want one with Steve's army to kind of help with scouting and launching battles and stuff, but I need one more to just go straight at enemy territory and see what they can find. Um, now that that storehouse is done, I could pick up the other production. And I think I'm gonna send Steve's army back to grab the gold that's down there probably, because I am pretty tight on gold. I, I might have been a better choice to get the gold vein actually, in retrospect. All right, we're gonna split up this army so some of them can start moving back towards that road. Um, this guy can go ahead and grab the production. That gets me part of the way through the library and finishes the storehouse so I get extra food on this turn. And then he'll go back down here so we can get that gold pickup and then move on out. All right, uh, Observer, you know what? I'm gonna have this one go ahead and start scouting forward. And we met a city-state. They look really nice. Uh, Enjoy your independence for now. Now these guys are gonna to be tougher than normal city-states. They have a bigger city. Um, and I don't have a Whispering Stone to start dealing with them. So most likely I'm going to fight them uh, to get war spoils, but uh, not yet. We need to see what else is around here. I'm particularly looking for free resource pickups or to make contact with those dragons. Each unit that summons a Warhound to debilitate enemies. Okay, so new research, we've already done all that. Got the Harrier, got the Storehouse, and spell, ready is, spell is ready to scorch the land. So I'm curious, this is probably a waste of mana at the start here, but I kind of want to just see what it does to these forests that, because I, I would be better off, hang on a second, let me check something on my units, because I'm not used to using these environmental modifiers. Uh, moving through sand costs five move points instead of six. I think that only, counts as oh no 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 don't disband my new unit um i think that only counts on like actual sand terrain but i don't think this counts as sand terrain that counts as forest this counts as cliff 
So yeah, I don't think it actually matters at all for me in here. Unless the road matters. Forest road. Yeah, unless I got rid of the trees, I don't think that makes a difference. So I'll just have that spell ready for when I need to expand somewhere that I can't normally build a farm on. Um, might actually expand out this way a little bit. I think the other observer that I'm working on is actually going to see what's over here real quick. Because I need to see what's immediately around my city. So we'll hold off on Scorch the Land for now. We'll just have it ready. And I'll end the turn. Because we're going to need that eventually. There's already some pretty nasty stuff spawning out here. Two tier 4 druids of the cycle. Um, there's that temple of the tome right there. Entrance to the underground. Huh? Right. It's kind of absorbing what's all around me here. Mentally. Uh, the library's got another turn before it's done. I will probably go ahead and queue up another building for them to work on. In the meantime. Uh, maybe have them get started on an additional granary. Yeah. I really want to grow quickly. And I can always pick up another forest biome pretty easily by just building another a second forester on that tile. Alright. So we're good there. New Empire Development skill is available. Um, that would have been nice on the last turn. Doesn't really help me right now. So we'll hold off on that, but I need to try to remember to use that if I clear another infestation. Or whenever I do clear another infestation. For now, I'll hang on to the points. Actually, I will honestly probably forget to do that, so I'll just take it now. I'm not going to use the uh, Empire points for anything else immediately, and there will be other infestations to fight, so I'll take it now. Yeah. Alright, why don't you go a little further and just see what's down here? So it is a, it's a layer of silt, plus two mana for quarry and city domain. That could be pretty good. I could probably make a lot of quarries around here, although these are, you know, some of these are just desolate nothingness that I could just build a hut on. So I'll have to turn those to sand to at least make farms. Uh, all right, you keep going. We've got plenty to explore. Maybe I don't want to meet the dragons quite yet, because if I meet them before they meet each other, they might come after me. Didn't think about that. Oh, hey, there's a seal. Um, but I can't do anything about that. There is another infestation over here, so I should see what that is. The seals have a lot of stuff on them. Man, they're going to be so far away. This game's actually going to be really hard. Just because of how big the map is and how far away the enemies are. I could see it, maybe. Maybe it's not going to be that bad, because if you think about it, there's six AI crammed in here, so it might not be too big. All right, that's good for this turn, I suppose. I'm not really sure if coming down here for the money alone is really worth it, but maybe I could clear that layer of silk while I'm down there. I'm probably going to need to hurry production of a Hound Master to do it, though. I imagine I'll probably need the extra backup. First things first, let's go grab that mana with this guy, and then head straight east to see what's over here. Okay, Archon Blood, that's pretty nice to find. I like that. It lets you put lifesteal on things that you can give to heroes in the Arcane Forge. Um, one more turn for growth on this, and then I can boost production of the workshop and finish it pretty quickly. Steve should go down here. We are going to fight those dogs and gremlins, but I'm beginning to think maybe I want to take the Lair of Silk earlier. No, we'll let the Houndmaster finish before that. Um... I'll come back for those Hound Masters later. For now, I'm good with just going after the dogs. And leaving these guys in my territory just to get a tiny bit more health. I'll need to move in and then back. Actually, um, what I can do is move these guys a little bit further on. And then you may as well go back with this group. Actually, you could launch this battle so that everyone else can step back out one two three yeah so they don't really need to go any further than that i can just use the harrier to launch that battle on the next turn and then these guys can all run back to territory that they can heal in uh -huh. all right that'll work 
Yeah, I think I am going to try to clear that layer of silk earlier, just because it's behind me and I want it. Um, that's a derelict workshop down there. That's not fun. Uh, let's see, what else do I have? It's a mana node that doesn't have anything on it. Let's go this way. I see a tower. I'll grab that. And I did get my library done here, so a little extra research for me. Um, I'm going to definitely want designate target before I go into that layer of silk. So having that is good. Scorch the land. I don't need to do anything with yet, but it's going to keep reminding me every turn that it's ready. Which I kind of wish I could turn off that reminder. Alright. Oh, there is food over there. I just saw it. I... Missed it. Uh, I'm not giving you guys gold. No. Absolutely not. I need that money. Alright. Uh, let's see. Food there. Which is going to help with growth. I'm going to want that gold vein up here. I think I'm just going to grab the second forester now. And just focus. Zone in really heavy on growth. Because that's going to give me good progress towards that granary. Takes it from five turns down to three. And gets me gold per turn. Yeah, that's that's something I will take. Um, and then you go get the food. This will grow in three turns. This should take it down to two, or maybe if I'm lucky, one. But probably two. Okay, 79. Two turns. Yeah, that's fine. Um, see what's in this corner over here. Oh good, there's some scrolls here that I can pick up for a little extra research. This actually goes behind me quite a ways. I'm worried there may be an infestation back there. That's kind of what I want him to go check. Just to make sure there's not going to be any nasty surprises coming behind me. Alright, you guys move here. Now I should be able to handle this without too much trouble. Um, we'll see how the auto does. It handled it, but it, uh, that's too much damage. Like an unnecessary amount of damage. We're going to retry that. Yeah, we're gonna we can I can do that better. I can't afford time to have these guys sitting around healing when I, I need to be on the move, so. Um I don't have my observer though. That could have been part of the problem. Forgot about that. Oh hey, uh probably want to get out of the way of that. Um So those gremlins are annoying, but the muskets are kind of a good counter to them. They teleport away after taking a single hit, but since you do full damage in one hit, it kind of works. Uh, let's see. You've got... You're going to probably use that. Um, he's over here by himself, so I'm going to I'm gonna try to go after him. Or maybe I want to actually lure them into attacking me. I just don't like this terrain here as much. It kind of favors them a little more than me, I think. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean this way more. Okay. Uh, I want to form a line, uh -huh. if I can. Hmm. Oh, I forgot to put Steve's armor on. Crap. Okay, Steve, can you... You probably can't hit him through that. Okay, that's fine. Um, Alright, if that's the case, then let's back off into the trees and try to get them to come to me. I want these pikemen up front. They got a little bit more health. Harriers can be kind of wherever they, they're mobile. They can move and still do their attack, so we'll do that. Um, put these pikes here. Actually, I would probably rather do like this. Yeah, I like I like this setup a little bit better. All right, that works, I think. Keeps lines of sight open for my range units is primarily what I'm thinking about. Okay, they used behind you. At least I think he did. So I knew somebody was going to take a decent amount of damage, but now we can mess this guy up pretty bad. 
And I can try to immobilize those gremlins. Depending on where they get ported to, they might not be able to do anything on their next turn. What I should probably be doing is getting flank attacks on them. Since I get that bonus damage. Let's see, though. Let me make sure I can kill this dog. Um, 70%. I have a better idea. Wait, no, gremlins are a skirmisher. They can move away from my pikes. I was gonna try to use the pikes to guard them. What I'm thinking about doing is, I wish this would tell me exact damage about, well, actually it does, 32 damage and 36 damage. They have 69 health, 32 plus 36 is 68. So I just barely won't kill them. Um, so I need to do a tiny bit of damage to them. I could do it with the pikemen, but I don't really wanna leave him open to attacks from the gremlins on the next turn. I kind of want to get him out of here. I could use a spell here, um, which would... Yeah, Fury of the Horde doesn't help here, but I could use a spell to weaken him just enough to where I can kill him. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I want that dog off of me because he's got multi-hit attacks. Then Steve and Musket Guy can kill him. Although Musketman's only a 70% shot. Don't really like that, but I think my setup, I've already kind of committed to it, so it sort of had to take it there. I might have done that differently had I realized the Musketman only, Musketman only had a 70% chance to hit. But fortunately it worked out. Um, I can now go here and flank the Gremlins with this. It'll immobilize them, so... Oh, they can't move now. Okay, that's actually pretty... That's actually really good. Um, I put them in almost the perfect spot. Because now they're immobilized, so they actually can't step away from my spearmen. So they can't do anything other than... Oh, a nasty multi-attack that would kill the spearmen. Forgot they had melee attacks on top of everything else. I probably am going to need to soften them up. Um, how about you? Depending on where it puts these guys, it could be good or bad for me. Wait, they're facing the wrong way. He could freely move away, and then they can't do anything other than the behind you ability. And if the other gremlin's indisposed, that would be fine. I'm not sure if I can shoot over that rock, if that's, like, impassable cover or not. So just to be on the safe side, I'm going to move these guys here. It won't be a flank attack, but it will at least move them. Yeah, it's no line of sight, so the other rock... It looks lower, so there might be a line of sight from there, but I don't really have a way to... Well, actually, I do. I could just move here and... Yeah, see, no line of sight, but I can undo the move, so... Um, yeah, let's let's move here. From here, I can hit them 80%. Actually, I think I'd rather take 100% shot from right, right here. No, it's still 80. Okay, that's maybe not great. Um... Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack this gremlin to weaken it, because it can do multiple hits against my skirmisher, and I'm going to back the other guys away from both gremlins. Okay, so he now is much weaker, can't do as much damage, uh, and then I can back these guys off, and even put them in trees, so they're a little bit more covered. Alright, that is pretty good. Oof, okay, that was close. I ended up taking just about as much damage as I otherwise would have anyway. Um, so yeah, this was a little har harder without the overseers to help with marking stuff. In any case, I can get some flank attacks off on him. They port, I forgot about that, but uh, it doesn't matter because I have a 100% chance to hit them. And Steve can actually sprint a little bit. So we'll try to get him a better angle. Because I think I have marked that guy. So I should have a pretty good chance to hit him with Steve. It's 90. I think I will take the 4 damage on these guys. Oh, crap. Yeah, I keep forgetting about their port. Uh, gosh, I would feel dumb if this guy died to this. Okay, what I'll do is... Oh, wait, no. He's, he's fine. 
Because the gremlin's facing the other way. Okay. I just didn't want Steve to miss on a 90 and kill a friendly. Okay, well that didn't really help. I didn't really do that much better than the AI did. And unfortunately this Harrier is one of the most injured. So we're going to have to move back and heal before going after the uh, Lair of Silk. But uh, that's okay. City borders don't grow for two more turns, so we'll have to walk all the way back. Uh, these guys... Can any of these guys move? Okay, it's just the weakest. It's just the one that needs healing the most is the one that's slowing everybody else down. So we're just going to merge everyone together. Okay, let's take that watchtower. Um, derelict workshops. Two of them. That's that's not good. <laughs> um, at least Steve leveled up again. I'm gonna grab him archery. More damage and accuracy. That's what I'm using him for. Okay. And turn. And should I have a hound master ready to go soon? Yep, he's good to go now. Actually. Let's go ahead and order up another one. Um, yeah, my granary's coming along nicely. Uh -huh. uh, mm. I'm gonna move them. The Houndmasters can kind of be separate from the others because they move faster. Uh -huh. So I'll actually have them go pick up. Uh, you know what? I'll have them go pick up that this over here right now since I can't do anything else at the moment. That gets me. Uh, it gets me whatever that marking spell was. I forget the name of it. Summon Irregulars is good. Um, I'm going to want that. Huh? Okay, then move this guy. Start moving him up north. No, I still want to see what's back in this corner. If there's an infestation back here, I want to know about it. Okay, and then that army can stay there for a couple turns. You, I want to move forward to get a better eye on this infestation here. Scout this all out. Because um, I'm going to eventually have to send a war party just straight through here and clear out all of this stuff. Fortunately, I'll get units from those infestations now. Designate target. Yeah, that's it. This is one of my favorite spells for this build, and you get it almost right away. All right. So we're good there. Got a Houndmaster. And actually probably order another one after that. Yeah, I've got plenty of money, so I'll be able to order up some more. Alright. Honestly, I think those seals... I'm glad I put the seals on Dormant. Because I think that's going to end up being maybe one of the hardest things about this game. Is That, that really is going to force me to go after those dragons and make sure neither side wins. Okay, so there is something down. Yep, there is another infestation back here. Crap, I really didn't want it. This is like so far out of my way. Um, really didn't want to go after it, but I'm gonna have to go find them anyway. It's on the ruins of an ancient city. Uh, this isn't a bad, there's a lot of stuff back here that would make for a halfway decent city spot, but oh, there's a seal there. Um, That would be nice to have. Well, I've got to figure out what that is before deciding what to send against it. But that's going to suck. Especially if the under other infestations start sending stuff at me at the same time. Alright, how are you guys doing? Uh, I need another turn to heal. That's fine. Can send my hound masters out ahead. I'll probably hurry production of this last hound master when he's ready. Okay, what does this need to grow? A farm? You know that that works for me. We can build farms out here to the east. Probably we'll take this spot first, and then that pro finishes production. Yeah, I'll, I'll finish production on both of those really quickly back to back. Then I could even throw in a vendor. Um, for a little extra gold. Start getting that done early. All right, so city's growing well, and I think I've done it as efficiently as possible so far. OK. 
Okay. Close that and end turn. Nothing else to do at the moment other than wait for those heals. Alright. Hopefully I can come to get, come up with an army that's just powerful enough to handle this. We're going to spend the 70 gold to get that Houndmaster now. Well, actually, I don't know, because he might be able to catch up with Steve on the next turn. Because Steve's got one, two... Yeah, it won't be until two turns for Steve to get there, and the Houndmaster could get there in two turns. So actually, I don't need to hurry production of him. I actually don't even need to send all of these units down here, but I guess I may as well just keep the army together. Alright, so we'll find this layer of silk. I already know you're going to go in there. And we'll need the one extra Houndmaster. I'll probably drop one of the Harriers and one of the mer Mercenaries to keep somewhat of a balanced army. I don't know why I keep clicking on that force of habit, I suppose. Alright, I need to find out what type of infestation this is. Okay, it's another derelict workshop. That's okay. I mean, derelict workshops are tough, no doubt about it, but the one nice thing about them is that they're not the astral rift uh, ones. The, the ones that spawn the magical entities, the lost wizards and stuff like that, those ones are really freaking hard to kill. Um, derelict workshops, I can work around. They do tend to have a lot of Reaver stuff in there, but I can match that with better versions of my own Reaver stuff. But those freaking lost wizards are just a whole nother menace. Like, they're, they're awful. I hate fighting those things. Uh, okay, that's not a free pickup. For a second, I thought that was something free. Um, I could get the watchtower. Can't get the food, because there's a bunch of there's a freaking bone dragon guarding it. Okay. There's going to be a lot of dragon slaying this game. As opposed to my last game where I was the dragon to be slayed. Okay. Cross purposes. What is this? Scout reports you that you spotted strange man a merchant collected. Okay, that's the city-state race near me. Okay. Send guards from Keltrin to repel the traitors from your realm. No, I don't want to do that. I'd rather just seek them out. Yeah, I mean, the others are just negative outcomes, so... I'll accept that quest. Don't know where it is, but... Right over there? Eh, I was kind of planning to go that way anyway. Because I can't clear a derelict workshop yet. I'm going to need more backup for that. All right, so he can get out ahead. I am going to build another one of those. I'm probably going to build a couple more of those. We'll let the vendor finish, and on the next turn, the city borders grow again so I can start boosting something else. Or actually, the next turn, I can build the town hall. Might actually pay to hurry the vendor so that I can get the town hall more quickly. All right, you guys keep on moving down here. And you stay there. I did see a tower, a watchtower up here in the corner, so I'm going to try to go grab that and just keep checking behind me to make sure there isn't other nasty stuff. And there is. There is another... Oh, gosh. There's a lot of infestations around me. Does anyone know if there's a range to what the, where those will attack you in? Because I think infestations on the other side of the map don't really ever attack you. And I th I, it feels to me like there's a certain distance. Oh, another derelict workshop up there. I'm going to have a whole army just from that perk I took in the Empire Tree that gives me units when clearing infestations. Um, Let's see. Oh, which one of those do you, these do I want? This is a good question. I think I want... It's non -reaver. Yeah, because this would benefit my Houndmasters. I think I want that more than Spawnkin right now, because I'm building a lot of Houndmasters. Yeah, I want that. We'll get Spawnkin later. Uh, I probably should start using this, right? I think so. 
I've got mana, so I may as well. Um, as long as I have enough for this combat, which I do, uh -huh. or will. New Empire Development skill available. Unit Tier 1 units cost 20% less upkeep. Yeah, that's good with Tome of the Horde. I'll take, I'll spend the Imperium on that. Fine with me. I may want to um, ignore the uh, the workshops for a minute and actually focus on going after that city-state. We'll see where this quest leads with these spies. I forget what the outcome of that ends up being. All right. You move there, and then we'll take Steve, one Merc, and one Harrier each. Probably the higher promoted units. Let's see what we find in here. Make sure I've got the right... Yep, that's the right army composition. Hmm, risky battle, but probably worth it to clear our wonder. Fire. Several areas of flammable obstacles are on fire. This one in the upcoming battle, sprawling spider webs. Ah, you know what? Setting fire to stuff seems to be more in line with our uh, our MO. Holy crap! There's a couple tier three units in there, though. All right, you know what? This is really risky and I'll probably lose something, but I kind of want to get this structure. I'm already all the way down here, so if I lose a couple things along the way, I'm not going to sweat it. Plus, Steve is really powerful, and so is his mage lock buddy, and I'm going to have two extra dogs, although they're going to have one extra from... No, no, that, that's a wild speaker. That's not a hound master. Yeah, let's do it. I might end up regretting this, but a lot of times I've noticed in these places, yeah, you can see there's kind of funneled choke points and stuff, so. You can normally get the AI to make bad decisions in environments like this. So that's the goal here. I did just realize, though, that I probably should have brought in an extra... It probably would have been better to bring in an extra mercenary, because this guy is really the only melee unit that I have, other than the hounds. So, yeah, I don't know. It could go both ways. In either case, um, I probably want him guarding the two range units. I think this point here looks good. Yeah, there's a walking path through there. So if I can take this spot right here, it kind of blocks both ways. I like that. Let's go there. And just try to avoid stepping in the fire if I can. I don't want to bunch up too much though because the spiders in the back have their AOE webs. So I'll probably want to scatter a little bit when that gets closer. The fire will burn out in three turns so I can wait on that. I might send a hound, one of the um, hound masters over here to the side along with the Harrier. They're a little more mobile. And I'll send you up here for now. We can kind of bunch up, but we will need to split up eventually. And I got another dog down here. So this gives like a small army that can flank around from the side. I don't really have any other rhyme or reason for this particular approach right now. I'm kind of just waiting for that fire to burn itself out. Hopefully it doesn't spread. Okay, so he summoned his little uh, vampire spider hatchling. I'm not too worried about that. I can kill that pretty quickly. Now, what's that web? They can do, it's like a cone attack that goes two spaces in front of them and to the side. That could hit these guys on this turn. I probably want to back off a little bit. Oh gosh, I think the fire is spreading. It is spreading. Okay, hang on. Because that I don't think that one was there before. On fire three, on fire two, on fire three. Okay, fire is spreading. Um, let's back off. I was not expecting this. 
I'm gonna back up and try to lure them out into the open here. And I wanna try to get my units away from the fire because I don't wanna get burned. Yeah, new plan. It actually doesn't really make a huge difference, though, because um, the fire could just spread back towards me. All right, well, this is the best I can do for now. Okay, well, at least the fire is affecting them. Well, he just immobilized that target, so I guess this is where we're fighting. Uh, but that's okay. This is not a bad spot. They're being aggressive, which is what I wanted, and I think I can take that. I think I can take that spider out pretty quickly now. Uh, those guys don't have any sort of range attack, so they have to come through the fire to get to me. This guy over here is in a little bit of trouble, but I can use the hound to help, I think. Yeah. So. Actually, I see a good move here. Although, it, eh, it's a little risky for. Unless I can immobilize one of the spiders. Okay, regardless of what happens, I think this hound is going to go out here and engage these spiders. You can cancel their defense mode, sunder their defense. Now, if I move this unit here, I can get a flank attack and probably kill those spiders, but I'm gonna need to do something about these other ones that are on the other side. That group has already taken some damage, so what I think I'm going to do is move the Harrier forward and, um, Oh, but I would really like the Harrier to mark that one to make sure those mage locks can hit it. It's 85% chance, though. I think they've got a pretty good... Yeah, between the two, that's 36 damage and 29. I think I'm willing to roll that 85. Yeah. Wait, 36 plus 29 is... Uh, 65, I think, and the spider has 62 health. Yeah, we'll kill it. As long as they can land that hit. 85, I'll take the chance on. Okay. Then Steve can definitely kill them. So that's one tier three down. Um, now at this point, I want to move this guy up. But I don't want to move him too far. We want to immobilize that spider so it can't do anything on this turn. Move this guy all the way around to where I can get a flank. Okay, good. That counts as a flank right there. And it doesn't leave his back open. Oh, he grazed it, though. Well, I've got others that can assist. I think I can get this other dog around, but he'll have to run through the fire to kill the spiders. Which is probably better than the alternative. All right. I'll, I'll take that. That'll be what I do. Dog will be on fire, but it's okay. Um, then I'll probably just move these guys up a little bit. I don't really have anything for them to do right now. We're just kind of whittling down the enemy as they come to us. Also, I have to remember, I got my spells, so... Don't forget to use those. Um, matter of fact, do I want to use one of those? I have 45 casting points. That strengthens tier 1 units, um, which would benefit the hounds. I don't really want to immobilize any of their units right now. Any more of them, anyway. I kind of want them running around in the fire, so... We'll just end the turn and save it for a designate target. Tusk 20 casting points, so I can only do it twice anyway. So yeah, I probably want to save for that. Yep, don't care if the dogs go down. They are expendable. All right, so we got another spider up here. This one is going to be harder to kill, crap, because he's out of range of the mage locks. Mage locks do have a shot on those guys, those spiders, which is gonna be improved if I move back. So what I think I'm going to do, is I don't want that spider to get its big web attack off. I'm gonna back these guys up. It's still only a 20%. It's because these guys are in the way. All right. Um, I can move them. 
That boosts it up to a 60. Uh, probably would be okay with that. I kind of want Steve to... I kind of want to designate target on this big spider and have Steve and these other group kind of chase it down and kill it real quick before it can use its web. I think that's more important. I could finish the spiders off with the harriers if these guys just graze or something. Okay, they got the kill. I'll take that. Um, then designate target on the spider. That distracts it and marks it, making it far easier to kill. In fact, I might be able to kill it with these guys from back here. Maybe. Oh, close. Not quite, though. It's okay. I've got another one that can help. So we'll do this. And I'll move you here. I'll move you here. You shoot the spider. Kill it. Okay, that's another tier three down. And move you back down here. Okay. Spider's coming this way. Um, one more big one over here. That actually wasn't... Okay, yeah, this is this one's still a threat. But it has already used its web. So when did it use its web? Oh, it must have used it to kill the dog. Well, that was a waste, but I won't complain. Um, all right, we need... This guy is going to probably come after them. I don't really want that to happen, so I'm going to... Yeah, let's use our mercenary guys as the frontliners. That's probably where they should be and set up like that. I think that looks good. It should protect the Harriers. Okay, he's gonna run right into the fire for us. That's fine. Okay, not bad. Not bad. Okay, 65% chance to hit them from here. 70% chance on those spiders. How's Steve looking? All right, we need to take out the other big spider. So we're gonna designate target on that. Steve, that will allow him to darn near kill it. Um, these guys have a 70% shot on this. It would be better if I could move these guys, which I can do if I'm willing to take a hit. See, if I do that, I can... Hmm. So I need to get this guy out of here if he's going to survive. So probably need to get him back to, like, there. This is a little complicated, but I think I can figure out a way. I don't think anyone needs to die here. Um, okay, that's probably a no-brainer to have Steve take that shot. The question is, who's going to do just that little bit of extra damage to finish it off? I think I want it to be this guy... But in order for that to work, I need to kill this guy and that guy. Um, I think I need to take this shot first and see if it lands. Okay. With that shot out of the way, I should be able to kill that spider. If I do this right, I could probably lock this guy down. If I can kill the spider... Spider. From there, you've got a good chance to hit just about everything. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'll use him to do the little bit of extra damage to make sure this guy dies. Steve can do the main kill. If I can get this little spider out of the way, I don't think I have enough units to do this. I wanted to immobilize that guy. I wanted to immobilize this guy and then put the spear right next to him so he literally couldn't do anything other than corpse eating. Um, I also would love to get a flank attack on those guys, but I can't really do that without running through fire. I don't think I want to do that. Well, what I could do... Oh, this kind of solves two problems at once. Just go all the way around to do the flank. Unfortunately, I did do a graze, but... It's actually not terrible. Then what I can do is... Oh, okay. This will work. What I can do is I can... 
hurt him, and then I can do this, which is going to kill that unit and put me where it was standing, trapping trapping this guy right where he is. Yeah, so now he's surrounded. He can't go anywhere. Or throw his magic or do anything. He'll do corpse eating, but that's fine. And he can just defend. All right, cool. Um, then what I can do is back off. Get a flank attack. That sh Wait, hang on. Why is that not a flank attack? Oh, because they went into defense mode. Okay, that makes sense. Um, Steve's got 100% shot from there. Love that archery bonus on him. And then you guys can just take him out. All right, that actually went really, really well. No casualties. Um, and structure cleared. What do we got here? Layer of Silk Aftermath. Um, yeah, I'm gonna probably steal stuff from this person. Yeah, we're gonna steal her stuff. I got money out of that. I might have gotten items. Also, before I forget, I'm going to remember to give Steve that armor. Uh, let's see, he's gotten to level four as well. What would be a good perk for Steve? Honestly, probably Mass Rejuvenation. It just... It's its just healing that I don't have a lot of otherwise. At least not right now. Demon Step. Targets to Hex. Deals damage to units. Enemy units. One hits fumble their attacks for a turn. That's a really good one. I do like Visions of Woe a lot. But I don't really have much use for the Astral Affinity that it provides. I could really use the Materium or the Nature, so it's going to be one of these two. Summon Elemental is a solid choice and does give me... Yeah, I think I gotta go with Summon Elemental here. As much as I want Mass Rejuvenation for the Nature... well. Hang on, let me look at the Empire Tree for a minute. Because I don't really have the Nature Tomes in any of my plans for this game. And there's a lot of good stuff in here that I'm going to want. Extra food from farms, or generating in your own terrain. Alright, we'll hope Summon Elemental pops up again later. But for now, we're going to use Mass Rejuvenation, I think. I think from a strategic perspective, I would rather have Summon Elemental right now, but but I'm mostly picking this for the affinity because there's just there's stuff in the imp, in the nature tree that I really want. I am going to pick a Materium Tome, the next tome I unlock, which is why I'm not taking Summon Elemental. I know there's a lot of good stuff in Materium, but um, I think this is is better for the long term for my economic growth because the nature i just love the nature affinity tree there's just so much good stuff in there um sentinel doesn't do him any good probably would want to just give him defense or something that oh no he gets marked target and it's a free action well i'm gonna want that it's also battle seeker training oh yeah that's from Tom of the horde i think uh, I think I would rather have Mark Target. Just free action Mark Target could be really helpful. It would be really helpful for helping the other mage lock that's not quite as accurate as Steve is. So we'll take that. Okay, that was good. Pretty happy with how that turned out. Um, we are going to send... Uh, well, we'll send these guys back ahead of everybody else. I can eventually expand my borders down there and pick that layer of silk up. I'll give extra mana for quarry and city domain. Um... These pretty much have to be farms. I'll end up having three farms here. So I'll probably move this one and build more quarries elsewhere. Also, city did grow, so I can either expand towards that or expand in a different direction. Um, how far would it take? I would need two town hall upgrades to get it. Speaking of which, I can start that. Do I want to hurry production on this? Vendor is 10 gold per turn. So an interesting way of looking about this, or maybe the more concrete way of looking at it, 
is that hurrying production on this vendor effectively only costs me 16 gold because I'll be getting 10 gold back over the course of the next turn. So, yeah, I'll hurry production under those circumstances. I kind of like hurrying it on, on gold upgrades because they sort of pay for themselves a little bit. That saves me a turn on the town hall. Um, I'm happy with that. So, for the moment, what is the next thing that I probably want to build? I probably need a quarry. Um, I think I'll take one here. I might, uh, can this spell be used to, or does this have to be in your land? Friendly or unowned. Okay, so it can be used pretty much anywhere. Um... Pretty much anywhere outside of enemy territory, I should specify. Uh, yeah, I think we'll we'll start working our way towards... Well, I don't know. This would be a good one, too. Although I already have foresters. I already have plenty of foresters. But I would like to work my way towards that iron deposit out there, too. And I could actually get that without any town hall upgrades necessary. So maybe I get that first. This also gives me kind of a path towards these uh, infestations in the east and an area that I can kind of refuel and regroup. I think I'm going to go with that. I'll get the forester here. That gives me three foresters now, which is really more than I need. Oh, hey, I got another growth. Uh, it can grow again. Okay. Um, well, I may as well grab that as a quarry then, I guess. Because I'm going to need that. And then I can go clear that off pretty quickly. Because I can move faster to get to it. We'll split off any units that can move differently from the others, just to save as much time on movement as I can. Because I'm not really in any danger of anything right now. And then, yeah, I think, did that make a road there? Yeah, it did. So I can get to those wild speakers pretty quickly, clear that off, then go up here and level up the whole army again, I think. That seems like a good option. Um, also, she's got loot I don't need right now um, and I, all I can do is grant her her freedom which sends her back to the city-state maybe I don't want to do that yet all right um, I'm not a hundred percent sure if these guys will take the watchtower when they go on a raiding path, but if they don't, oh, that's a great bird nest, okay. Not the worst thing I could run into, although I don't like those wind ragers. They're a pain in the butt to hit with range units. Um, derelict workshop, we can go more this way. Alright, uh, more production up there, I'll take that. Hopefully they don't send out a war party on this turn. I can start summoning irregulars. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start doing that. Because they take gold to maintain, they just take mana to summon. And since we're kind of coming right past here anyway, gives me another Harrier, and I'm just going to do it again. As long as I have enough mana to designate target in combat, um, I'm good with it. I will leave this Harrier here so he can launch the battle if I can get my other units close enough. It's kind of doubtful that I'd be able to, though. I wonder why this city grew twice so quickly. It must have been a reward from clearing the layer of silk that I didn't notice or something like that. May have gotten a big pot. I probably got a big bunch of food. Which made clearing it really worth it. All right, so I should be able to summon these guys near Steve too, right? Yeah, he can summon them. So I'll probably want to move him first. We're still working on Houndmasters. Okay, good. Let's get another one of those. I just want to keep those in pretty much constant production. City grows again in one turn, so this city is growing by leaps and bounds at this point. Love to see that. Uh, probably will expand this direction. Probably this way. Pick up a quarry. Pick up a farm. Pick up another farm. 
and then get the layer of silk once I get to rank 10 of the city or population level 10, which is going to happen pretty quickly, I think. All right, let's move these guys down here. Pretty much all the horsemen can sort of stay together. Just because they're fast. And uh, they can hang out with this Harrier guy. Um, Steve's army is going to be lagging behind a little bit. Uh, I can send the other horsemen out with them. Kind of want to keep them more like Harriers and Pikemen if I can. Looks good, and then I'll summon the Irregulars and we'll see what I get. Good. Uh, we got another Halberd Pikeman guy. That's what I was hoping for. Okay. And I'll probably just do it again. Well. Yeah, I'll do one more. We'll do one more. Because <laughs> they don't take mana, but eventually I'm going to be casting some enchantments on my units. Then those are going to take mana. Okay, so hopefully they don't break that tower, and then I could just at least keep an eye on this one infestation over here. Uh, this should help me get the... Yeah, this will help with my um, town hall upgrade. How far are we getting out here? I would be expecting this... Okay, maybe the map isn't really as big as I was thinking. Yeah, it's not quite that. It's not quite as big as I was thinking. I think this is just a large map, not a very large. It just seemed really big at first when I opened up the map and kind of panned and looked around. Uh, I'm going to try to grab that tower out there. Okay. End the turn here. Wow, it's actually getting kind of warm in my apartment for the first time in, well, a while. I live in Illinois, and um, for the winter in January here, we had like temperatures down, wind chills down to like minus 35 Fahrenheit, which I think is somewhere around minus 40 Celsius for European friends. It's actually pretty close. Okay, founding or absorbing cities takes minus two turns. Newly found cities gets plus one population. This could be handy for me when I go after those undead. I think I'm going to save the uh, Im Imperium or... Yeah, I'm going to save the Imperium for now. Wow, I could reach all the way over here and get uh, a research post, but what's the enchanted den do? Maybe I want to clear another structure, reach for it. I think this one's easier to get, though. Okay, that's where I got that big food boost from. It definitely was the spider lair. Okay, well, I know I've got, let's see, I've got the um, town hall done. I don't have the gold to build the next one, so I'm going to need to save that up. Maybe I should get another market. I need to build another farm for that. I could get the Arcane Institute. Actually, that probably wouldn't be a bad choice right now anyway. Um, I'm going to... Let's see. I'm going to take this and build a quarry here. And then I'll use my Terraform spell. I am going to stick with my plan of working down towards the layer of silk. Because about the time that I can reach that in terms of provinces is going to be roughly... The, the timing will line up, okay? In fact, though, both of these are roughly just as far away, so... Let's see, that gives me a quarry. Um, from that, I can get... Blacksmith, draft income... That might be actually really good right now. As long as I can keep up with the gold cost of producing Hound Masters at an increased rate. But basically, I just need units right now. Like, tons and tons and tons of units. So... This might be a good choice. Mana Forge would be five mana and five production income. That's also solid. 
I think maybe let's get the Mana Forge first, because that sort of speeds up other stuff a little bit and gives me a little extra mana income. We'll take that. All right. Uh, and then this kind of everybody is grouping up together here. Um, oh, crap. These guys weren't actually... I, they were just outside of my territory on the last turn. All right. I want you guys... Oh, they won't heal in the desolate terrain. I forgot about that. Um, how long is it going to be before that grows again? Six turns? Yeah, I got some time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use Scorch the Land here. Because I want to be able to heal in this territory. It's it's reaching out towards uh, enemies that I'm going to be fighting with those city-states and stuff. I need to be able to heal here. So let's add you to that group. Um, Steve can come here. We'll keep an extra, extra one of the pikemen with Steve. And they can have one of these and one of these. And I should be able to do this fight just fine. Um, I'm not too worried about the wild speakers killing something. It's a safe battle. The computer's at all intelligent, which it probably won't be. I'm probably going to have to do this manually because I'm sure I'll rush this guy in and get him killed. But uh, we're going to try auto. Maybe Steve will be smart enough to use mass rejuvenation in auto combat. Okay, they did something right, so I'll take it. Uh-huh. That gets me more draft, uh, closer to the next Houndmaster. And it finished production of that, um, that, uh, basically a shrine, but it's like not, it's like the reverse version of the shrine. Lodestone Foundry, that's 10 mana income and 5 production income. Yeah, we'll take that. Just keep adding, I, I'm, I'm prepare mana for future, oh gosh, I can hurry production and I'll, I'll spend two turns to hurry production on that two gold um then i can go for blacksmith or arcane institute either one maybe the arcane institute i feel like i'm producing units quickly enough that gold could become a little bit of an issue so let's go with the arcane institute here so i need to make sure i'm saving up enough gold for the next town hall upgrade when it becomes available um and I am going to summon an irregular here. What did I get? Another Harrier? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Uh -huh. I would have rather had probably another Pikeman, but it's all right. The Harriers are pretty good. Okay, I'm going to hold off on summoning more irregulars for just a little bit here. Because I want to make sure I've got enough mana for future combats. Yeah. Probably going to take Steve and a group and... See what I can get out of that. We'll move them as far this way as they can go for now. Okay, you can keep going north. Actually, maybe you want to cut west a little bit. Yeah, let's let's go west. I think there might oh, there's a pickup down there in the crevice of the mountain. There's like I think that might be gold. Looks like a chest of some sort. Okay, do I want to go for that tower? Because I don't know where the dragons are, and I'm beginning to think maybe I don't want to meet them quite yet, because I want them to sort of aggro each other first. If they meet me before meeting the opposing dragon team, that could end up being really bad for me if they send start sending a bunch. I need them to infight a little bit. I want to get involved when I feel like I need to get involved. Yeah, I think I'm going to circle around and have this guy go to the east. And see what's in areas that I can more easily expand to. I'm definitely going to want to take that city. Yeah, I'm going to need to go to war with them. Alright. Infestation is sending invading forces. Alright. Alright. They're going to be a pain in the butt back there until I get rid of them. That would, I think I also would like to put another city back here, but maybe only if I can find a cave entrance, because otherwise it would be kind of small. You can't expand onto the mountain probably. Oh, wait, hang on. Oh, I could expand through there. The mountain's just, like thin enough that it'll allow me to do it. So yeah, never mind. Yeah, that's a good spot for a city back there, I think. We'll, we'll get one eventually. All right. 
boy. Alright, so on this next turn I should be able to piece together enough units that aren't wounded and have Steve take them. I'm gonna definitely want the mage lock. I might take I'll take both of these hound masters for sure. Anyone who's harder to level up. I'll take this hound master even though he's a little injured. And then uh Maybe one of the newbie pikemen. Yeah. Bring you along. Alright, so these guys will all go here, and they should pretty easily handle this. Yeah. Okay, then they all level up, which is perfect. I am going to send the Hound Masters back down and uh -huh. resplit them back up into the armies uh -huh. that I had prior to this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then we can worry about levels. So. Uh -huh. Steve gets more stuff. Defense, fighting one, or sentinel. Are there any other army leader abilities that would be handy for him to have? Like, it would be good for him to have more army leader abilities, but I'm using him more as a, a fighter. Killing momentum would be, uh, well, it would be okay on him. It would pair well with the wand of poison darts, I think. Because you could shoot something and then throw poison at something else. Yeah, I should probably work my way through this. Oh my gosh, Skirmisher Discipline. I actually didn't even realize that. I didn't play far enough previously one of my test games to even see this, but this would give him Slippery. Uh, it's still, well, actually, honestly, that's actually not that good. Other than Zone of Control, okay, it's worth it for Fleeting. It's not stopped by an, oh, hang on. No, it doesn't say it ignores zone of control. It says it's not stopped by it. Uh, Swift. Actually, I don't think this is really any good. Because if an enemy runs up to you and you can't ignore their zone of control, you can let, let me know if I'm wrong about this. It says it's not stopped by enemy zone of control. But I'm pretty sure zone of control would still prevent him from firing if he's being threatened by another unit. Um... But if I already have Sprint, Slippery doesn't do me any good, because even if I'm Slippery, if I take a step away, um, I still won't be able to shoot my gun, whereas Sprint gives me the ability to take a step away for free and still shoot my gun. So that's actually not as good as it looks on the surface, I don't think. Um, I don't want to give him Fighting. We'll give him Defense just to unlock those later Warfare skills. And I'll get, uh, I do think Killing Momentum would still be very good for him, so I'm going to try to get that. Engraving of Focus, and now I can select a new Tome, which is going to be the Tome of Enchantment, because this is going to give my Riflemen extra range, and they already have one more range than a standard Archer, so this kind of turns them into Sniper units. I really like that. Plus, I like the stuff you get from the Materium Affinity Tree, and I'll be getting other Materium Go Tomes as we move forward. Sundering Blades is also really good, but I'm primarily getting, getting this for Seeker Arrows, so we'll take that. I do want to save up and get Engraving Focus, so we're going to have to save mana for a little bit here, but that's okay. We've got an army. We've got a two full stack army, which is going to be good enough to handle stuff like this. Um, and I can probably go down and think about uh, clearing that probably want to get these guys at least to here. I can probably go down and think about clearing that enchanted den. Okay, more stuff up here. Maybe area for another city? Not 100% sure yet. I have plenty of seals around me. If I allowed myself to do the seals when I could... Oh wait, hang on. This guy was supposed to... Go down there and get that. I forgot. I'll try to remember that on the next turn. But there is a free pickup down there. But yeah, if I was allowing myself to do the Seals win, this would actually be a pretty easy game. But that's not allowed. Steve wants to go slay some dragons. Get that sweet, sweet tax money. Alright, you guys move this way. Go ahead and take that. 
Okay, so this is useful. I now know where one of the dragon cities is, and they haven't seen me yet. So that gives me kind of a border to avoid going past until I'm ready to meet them. Basically, I, it allows me to sort of reveal myself to the dragons whenever it's convenient for me to do so. Um, I am still going to play it a little risky and go for that tower. I think it's close enough to my area that I kind of want it. I'm thinking, I'm imagining a circle bubbling out kind of like this. So it's probably about as far as I want to explore right now. I just want to give the dragons plenty of time to aggro onto each other as opposed to me. Of course, it's possible that when I meet them, they all see me as the weakest, easiest target, and then they all converge on me at the same time and I just die. That's a risk that we're just going to have to take. Um, I want to send you down here a little ahead of everybody else. I want to see what's in that enchanted den before I fight it. Or, well, I don't think I need to. It's a bronze structure. I cleared the other one without any trouble. So I, I just want to see... Um, I guess it doesn't really matter. I can just bring everybody else down when they're ready. I didn't need to move them because they're kind of leaving Steve's army behind here. I was going to leave them, but that's okay. All right, future upgrades. The city's growth has slowed down significantly. Significantly. Oh, what do we got here? The chairman of the Internal Revenue Service Council approaches you. Greetings, Supreme Commander Steve from Accounting. <laughs> That's a mouthful. <laughs> okay, um, evil character action. I could block draft in my own city, which I don't really want to do. Um, spend gold. So this is like a negative event. I don't want to lose city stability. I don't want to lose knowledge. I don't want to lose gold, but... This blocks draft, but it does gain me city stability. I need to... I wish you could minimize this and actually look... Oh, wait, hang on. It does let you. Oh, wait, I don't know what it's doing. Okay, that doesn't help me. It's like show. Okay, I didn't know it did this. It showed like a little outline of my character because I'm the one making this decision. Okay. Um, I don't know what to do here. I could gain city stability or just lose city stability for six turns. This loses 22 knowledge per turn. Changing Seeker Arrows from 5 to 7, which I really don't want to do. I want Seeker Arrows quickly. I'm thinking I might just spend the money, but my money's only 45 per turn. That's four turns of money. I'll take the research hit. A temporary research hit's probably the least bad. Or I could block draft, which gives money time to build up. Because I don't need draft, like, right now. I'm gonna block draft. Suppress with force. Um, and then we'll just wait on the more hound masters. We got enough. Um, oh, that was a bad decision because I can make mage locks now. That was a bad decision. I should have I should have taken the research hit. Especially since I'm about to make an arcane institute. Oh well. That sucks. That sucks. Should have done that differently. Um, do I want to investigate these guys, actually, now that I'm up here already? Oh. Probably do. Yeah. yeah, let's go see what this is all about over here. What they got nothing too scary. Inquisitors and a couple hound masters of their own, but I've got hound masters of my own, so. How far can you make it? Hey, kind of stuff's in the way there. Um, you could get in on this. Cross purpose encounter. Okay. They did simple traders. I'm gonna probably just attack them. 
Yeah, I don't know why it says this is a low-risk battle. I think I've got these guys way outnumbered, but let's see what auto combat does. Yeah, we don't need to lose anybody in this one. We are fighting in the volcano land, though, so... Alright, well, let's line up. I wish I'd... I, man, I'm, I'm kicking myself for blocking draft. That was dumb. Um, because I should be building mage locks right now. I guess this point still stands, though. I was kind of running a little low on money, so... It does give my economy a little time to build up again. But I'm going to get money from doing stuff like this, too, so... It's alright. We'll make the most of it. Um... losing track of where my mage lock is and all the hound masters because they all have the archery symbol he's right here okay let's see zealots are taking the front line they've got hound masters in the back and their little dogs and a pyromancer that one pyromancer is kind of a problem because that flame strike can hit multiple units so i don't want to bunch up too much um i'm gonna leave steve and these guys just kind of outside a range of their stuff Maybe, oh, nuts, I moved up too much. Okay, we'll block the Houndmaster with the pikes there. Um, and try to make sure that I don't let that Houndmaster get the first hit on any of these guys. Uh -huh. You could swing around to there. Um, I do have a lot of pikes now, which is good. Yeah, if I can lure them into charging, that would be good. I just, I do have really like a lot of units here, so. Uh -huh. Gotta use these numbers to my advantage. Uh -huh. I think I'm far enough away that this guy can't get me with his multi hit attack on anything other than like two units, so maybe if I can get him to use that, that would probably be ideal. We'll bring the archer there. Got a lot more hounds on this side. We'll kind of make a big flanking group of these things. Uh -huh. Pull these guys all up, and these guys up. Okay, and they, they can be grouped together safely because he can't reach any of them yet. In fact, I can move up a little more with everybody over here. The most he'll be able to hit is like one unit. Okay, uh, let's see how this goes. I think that's a good enough setup for now. Ouch. Okay, let's maybe not do crits, shall we? Okay, well, they moved a lot of units up into the kill zone, which is effectively what I wanted. Um, this hound can swing all the way around and get a nasty flank attack on that guy in the back. I will take that. Didn't actually do that much damage, but... I can pin him in here, though. Oh, wait, no, I can't. He's a skirmisher. He ignores attacks of opportunity. But does he ignore zone of control, though? No, he doesn't. He ignores attacks of opportunity, but not zone of control. That being said, he's a skirmisher, and he'll wreck... He's an inquisitor, so he'll wreck some stuff. I would probably like to shoot him if I can. Yeah. Steve could take a step and reach on this turn. Or Steve could heal everybody, but I don't think I'm going to have him do that right now. Alright, I need to get these hounds off of uh, those pikemen, I think. I think I'm going to start from this side and work my way up. Because the units that are down here can't really do much. I need to kill this guy so that I can get hounds through to get behind at those other archers. Um, so probably, well, let's see, that's a flank attack there. The skirmisher, it won't quite do it, but he could mark the target. Actually, maybe that would work. If I do this, that marks him and immobilizes him. Ah, oh, it's still not quite enough to kill. 
was hoping I could get a kill there. What I may do is use um, Suppressing Barrage on this group right here, because I can do a good amount of damage to everybody there. And I need to lock down one of those Hound Masters. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this guy to mark him again and injure him a little more. Use this person to finish that guy off, and this gets the Hound Master behind that group, or the the War Hound behind the group. The Hound Master too, for that matter, but I'm gonna hit this guy, lower his damage output a bit, and this will hopefully keep this guy from moving, especially if I can barrage him in place and then he can't use his big fire ability. Ah, uh, he resisted it. Okay. Well, what I can do is I can just sort of block him in here and I can still point blank him with an arrow or crossbow to the back. Okay. That's not bad for now. Uh, now I gotta think about this Inquisitor. So I think what happens with the Inquisitor kind of determines how I approach things in the center of the battlefield. I think Steve's going to have to move up and take the shot on him. Yeah. I probably would have preferred to distract him, though. Although he is facing... What direction is he? He's facing that way. So, yeah, he would still see Steve's shot coming. I can't quite do what I wanted to do here. Maybe I can immobilize him, at the very least. That would allow him to kill the dog, but... Well, he'll probably kill the dog anyway. I did mark him for the future. Uh, for now, I think what I'm going to do is have Steve... Let's see, maybe heal everybody. Steve can mark a target too. I need to remember that. He can do that for free now. I think I'm going to mark the zealot that's kind of in the middle of everything. And just shoot him. To injure him. Steve can darn near kill those archers, so I'll probably take advantage of that to get the Houndmaster out of the way. And then let's see, what can I do from here? I can kill the dogs. I might want to... No, he would still have to take a step to get to me. Can I kill the dogs with these guys? can. Alright, what I'm gonna do is kill the dogs with that guy. Have these guys come around and sort of kind of guard, prevent the Inquisitors from going straight after that unit. Although it doesn't appear they can go anywhere. Yeah, they'll have to, they basically have to attack the dog now. Alright, that works. And what can I do about the rest of these people? I kind of want to get another hound to pressure the other side of these guys and keep them from really going anywhere, but I need to do something about their war hound, and I also need to get this guy out of here. I probably need to just get him out of here now. He's taking a little too much damage. I've got extra units, so it's fine for me to cycle things in and out. Um, I'm going to move this hound master here. He can come pretty close to finishing that other guy. Alright, I think I know what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm going to have... I'm going to have this guy shoot him, actually. Because then these guys can use drive back and kill it. But then also kind of guard the warhound. Yeah. Okay. Weak point shot on these guys. You go here and use drive back. That locks the warhound down. It doesn't really lock it down, but it discourages it from moving. And then I can... Do I have anything else that could finish off that one wounded archer? I do. I have a harrier back here. 
yeah, this is what we're gonna do. Finish him off, and then this hound can come all the way through here. And now this guy is really pinned. Okay, I like that. Okay, that's fine. And now it's going to be pretty easy to wrap this all up down here. Um, I probably want to... Let's see, can I use him? If I back off, I can use him. Alright, let's do a weak point shot on them. Um, use the melee attack on this dog to finish them off. This dog can finish this archer off, but I want to move him up towards the enemy a little bit more. And then they all just start falling apart. Uh, the main thing is that skirmisher over there. I really want to get rid of him, but I can't really do a lot to him other than designating him as a target, sprinting, and shooting him with Steve. Which actually is probably what I'll do. Um, although it is, you know, I do kind of want to get... Um, focused aggression on all those hound masters and this just uses up more mana it might not be necessary for me to do this let's see if i do this i'll cancel his retaliation might not actually need to mark him he is facing the dog so there's that i can kill this dog uh, which frees up everybody else over here to attack this guy. Yeah, I don't need any spells. I don't even need Steve to do this. Alright. Problem solved. Nobody dies. Okay, this is an opportunity to go with, to war with Grimrise. Or I could demand gold from them. Okay, so... Hmm. I could get a bunch of draft in Kelton to kind of make up for what I did earlier. But draft is blocked, so what would that do? These guys look so weird. They have like big googly eyes. <laughs> um, it says it would instantly finish production of the Houndmaster, so it should work. And it might give me access to mage locks. What does this do? This basically lets me go to war, but it doesn't count as an evil act. I don't care if it counts as an evil act. So I think the best choice here is to take the draft and try to get a couple extra mage locks. I might, because this would give me production of the Houndmaster. It might give me enough to build a mage lock too. Even if it doesn't, the surplus draft should carry over. Okay, will this work? Yes, it does. Oh my gosh, that was so worth it. Okay, there goes all my money, all my money, <laughs> but I don't care. <laughs> I just got two extra guns and a Houndmaster. Okay, that makes up for what happened earlier. I feel a little better now. Now I got some extra guns to, to swing around. All right, um... I do have that infestation sending something after me, so that's something I gotta worry about. Uh, I will take battlefield looting. It just stacks well with everything else that I've already got going. Uh, but I have almost no income. That's something that's a problem. Um, I need gold. To get gold, I need to kill things. So uh, that's kind of where we're at. Steve's gonna have to go fight some stuff. These guys are standing on some. So I'll go down that way, huh? clear that gold stash, and probably use it to start working on a uh, a market, I think, to start getting my gold income back up, which I'll still be able to start on next turn anyway. Um, you boost it with the two farms. So we'll see what I, we'll see what I end up doing with that. Let me see if I can get my ar armies back kind of in some sort of organization. Actually, yeah, they don't need to be. They're fine. All right. I do want to go back down here and see what this pickup is. 
It's a small creature cage. Okay, I'll take that. Anything to grow my army for free. It is more unit upkeep that I gotta worry about, but otherwise it's not bad. Okay, I'm gonna try, yeah, like I said, I'm gonna try to get to that tower over there. I can't really afford any more irregulars. And I wanna save money for engraving focus, so. All right, end the turn there. I will definitely be ready for that army when it comes in that derelict workshop. I just hope they don't all send waves of stuff at me at the same time because that that could get a little overwhelming. Um, all right, how long is it gonna take to build the market? Three turns? I kind of would like to grab another farm before then. So maybe, see I'm at 30 gold per turn now, but that's partially because I'm generating gold. Um, the blacksmith does mean nothing right now un until I can build more units. Uh, tower Wizard Tower Foundation's a little cheaper, and yeah, I'll build that first. Because I'm going to get more gold to build the market, but I do want to get that little bit of extra Imperium started now. And it gives me more time to grow the city's borders and build another farm. Uh, what can I do with this? Okay, so I probably am going to need Scorch the Land first, though, if I want to put a farm here to work my way towards the Lair of Silk, or here, for, for that matter, if I take that. Although I can't, I don't think I can kill Lair that yet. Well, I don't know. I actually probably could. I've got a lot of units now. I might end up using Scorch the Land out here and building a farm on that. That gets me, uh, what is it, Rainbow Clover? More food? Yeah, you know what, I think I'm going to do that. That's the new plan. So we'll Scorch the Land. I'm going to have to hold off on engraving of Focus right now, even though I really, really want that. I think I'm going to need Scorch the Land next. Um, I might use Imperium to actually hurry growth of this city. Maybe I'll wait a turn, though, because my armies need time to get back down here anyway. So... This will work for now. Get everybody kind of together down here. Um, probably have the Harrier... Well, we'll worry about him on the next turn. My armies are going to need a minute to heal anyway, so I don't think waiting is the worst thing in the world. I am going to want to put an extra Mage Lock with Steve's army, though have them behind all those pikes but we can split for now we can put them in here but yeah I think I'm gonna go for that I still need the money though that's the problem all right we can go a little 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 further let me get the creature cage and see what I get dread spider hatchling hey I'll take that that'll evolve that's not bad. I just need to get it working its way back to my territory, which is going to take a while. <laughs> just got to cross a lot of mountains. Um, let's see if I can sneak up carefully, because I don't quite want to meet the dragons yet. All right. Nobody yet. All right. We can take that. And a gold ancient wonder. All right. I'm probably going to want a city up there. Where's my uh, Grim Rise? Okay, there's that, and then north of that. Okay, that would be a spot for another city. There's also a Howling Castle right up there, and a lot of resource nodes, uh, but also a derelict workshop that I'm going to have to deal with. It looks like there is a pass through the mountain. Okay, maybe not, maybe not a very convenient pass through the mountains, but there is kind of a mountain pass there. There are a lot of mountains. I feel like, it feels like even a little more than usual, and this game does tend to spawn a lot of them. Okay. Well, guys, I think this has been an exceptionally long episode. I think we're well over two hours, but I kind of wanted to go longer for the pilot episode anyway for this new series. All in all, um, I'm interested in this one. I've kind of been itching. I thought the Dragon War scenario just sounded really cool when it came out, but I didn't get an opportunity to do it. Um, so this gives me to cover that content while also covering the Reaver content. I do know the Primal Fury expansion is coming in just a few weeks. 
Um, so that's kind of a... I, I, I almost wanted to wait and try that and, and do that for my next series, but I didn't want to wait too long. I got people who support me on Patreon, which is really nice of them, and uh, and I kind of want to like you know make sure I keep content coming. It's been a couple weeks since I did an episode anyway, so. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you're interested in the premise of this series. I do think this one could be a lot of fun, particularly with that seals victory modification. I think that's going to really force me to get involved with the dragons war sooner than I would otherwise want to. Um, I believe seals works the exact same way that it does in Age of Wonders three. Uh, yeah, provides plus one point for seals victory every turn the Empire that has units standing on the seal. So it works basically the same way as it did in Age of Wonders 3. So I just have to keep a track of how many points these guys are accruing towards the seal's victory. Make sure I intervene before they get a little bit too many. But yeah, that's basically it. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. And I will see you all in the next episode. Special thanks to all my Patreon supporters, including Tier 3 supporters Blitz, Braden, Dawson Horner, Jimbro, Roderick, Sarah Feingold, and Tibian Army. Thanks so much, everybody. 